gentlemen, today our program is about, uh, <coughs> one moment, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please bear with us a moment. <laughs> Now, if our special assistant is ready, we will picture for you one of the Earth's most unusual inhabitants, man. Throughout the world, of course, there are all sorts of men. They look different in different places and have different ways of life. But basically, all men are the same. So to make things easier, let's put them together into one and let this one stand for all. He's a common man, just like you and me. By nature, man is one of the animals. But he has something the rest do not have. Human intelligence, the ability to reason and plan ahead. Other animals are at the mercy of the world around them. But by his ability to reason, man has learned to improve his lot. Carrying him ever upward, this ability may someday make man master of all he surveys. Well, nearly all, for at his side, of course, is woman. But this upward rise is being slowed by the sheer weight of numbers. The family of man is increasing at an astonishing rate, almost doubling every generation. Ironically, this too comes about through man's intelligence. To understand something of why this is so, let's picture one small community and let it stand for communities around the world. Now, to begin with, uh, <clears throat> to begin with, the number of people in the community remained about the same for many generations. There was almost a balance, a balance between the large number of babies born each year and the large number of people who died. The large number of deaths were brought about primarily by disease, often raging epidemics, and by famine. Most tragic of all, many of those taken were small children. Then, in the space of a single generation, man began to change these conditions. There was great progress in medical science. There was more food and better distribution. There were vastly improved methods of health and sanitation. Now let's go back to the balance and see what happens. There are still about the same number of babies being born each year. But today, deaths are cut in half or better, especially among children. The old balance is upset. Those who live now instead of dying are added each year to the number of people in the community. Of course, as more and more people are added, their needs increase. New industries are being developed to provide more goods. But whatever is done, it is not enough. But to see better what this means, let us look at a smaller group of people. <clears throat> I suppose we start with a middle-sized family. Father and mother, and just a few children. Now imagine that there is a house to live in and a plot of land which the father works to support them all. There is an ox to pull the plow and the land yields a good crop. With only this many at a meal, there is enough for all and even a little left over to provide money for some comforts and modern conveniences. The mother doesn't have to work too hard and stays healthy and happy. The children, too, are healthy and happy and go to school to gain an education. Even with modest resources, this family is doing well. But now let's paint another picture of this family and suppose that in time, more and more children are born. But let us also suppose that the house and the plot of land remain the same. Now the entire crop must be used just for food. But even so, with this many mouths to feed, there won't be enough to go around. Of course, there will be no money for modern conveniences. Even worse, 
the ox can no longer be fed, and the work must be done by human effort. The mother will have too much to do. She'll be tired and cross, and her health will suffer. The children will be sickly and unhappy, with little hope for the future. And when the sons grow up, the land will have to be divided into so many small pieces that no one will have enough. Even if the family moves to the city, with little money and many mouths to feed, there will be the same poverty as before. This picture can be true for countless families if the number of children born is left to chance. But fortunately, this need not happen anymore. Ah, he does not know what he is saying. That's the way life is. Nothing can be done. Today, things have changed. Modern science has given us a key that makes possible a new kind of personal freedom, family planning. Family planning? Never heard of it. Family planning means that without affecting normal relations as man and wife, you can decide in advance the number of children you will have and when you will have them. You can have one child, or two, or more. You can space them out over a number of years. You can choose to stop having them all together. But you can start again if you change your mind. You can have only the children you want, and only when you want them. That's what family planning can mean to you. Well, that sounds good, but talk is cheap. Can you make that idea really work? Today, family planning can be accomplished by several effective methods. Merely by taking pills or using simple devices. Yeah, that's very nice, but where do we go to find out about this? You can learn of the various methods and get help in deciding which is the best for you by asking a doctor or a health service worker or by going to a family planning clinic. Hmm, well, that's easy enough. Uh-oh, now she has a question. She wants to know if it is an acceptable thing to do and what other people think about it. There is an acceptable way for everyone. And many couples are already practicing family planning. Your own neighbors, as well as couples all over the world. Oh, I didn't realize that. Is it safe? Oh, that is a good question. Family planning is easy and medically safe. In fact, it actually improves the health of mothers and children because both are better off if children are not born too close together. And after all, the real measure of a man is not how many children he can produce, but how well he takes care of them. Well, now, that makes sense. Maybe he knows what he's talking about after all. Uh, all right, we will try it. Any couple who wisely chooses family planning will definitely improve future prospects for their whole family, and especially the children. And, on a larger scale, if enough couples choose family planning, the balance will be restored. But this time in a better way. Thus, every couple has the opportunity to help build a better life, not just for themselves, but for people everywhere. And all of us have a responsibility toward the family of man, including you. Thank you.